What's going on guys? A very very sad PX cam here back here with a brand new video. We are here at Barcelona for our very first FIA race of the season as we have decided to pick the Aston Martin for our manufacturer and unfortunately for our very first race we did not do well as we actually ran out of fuel uh, about a lap before the finish line so uh, we're gonna try to see if we can uh, avoid having that same mistake on the second races we're gonna be racing for 309 points as we uh, qualified in fourth for our second race here we're gonna jump right into the intro so the intro um, well for the strategy here it was very very interesting there was a lot of different strategies that you can take as we were given the hard mediums and soft compound tires but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start off on the hard compound tires in the front and then we're gonna switch off to the softs save as much fuel as we can and uh, hopefully we don't run into the same uh, result that we did on our first race so we're gonna buckle up right here see if we can get a good result for the second race let's see what happens Jumping to the race now, we get our 3-2-1 as the planes overhead show the Espana Pride. And uh, we cross the start finish line to officially get our FIA season underway. And here we go, guys. So going down the straight, heading into turn number one, we're just warming up the tires here as we did start on the hard compound. We're just looking for our breaking point as the Corvette goes onto the inside of the Lexus of Vortex and he is able to make the overtake. So a very aggressive move from the Corvette is going for the move right on the opening lap on the opening corner. And uh, he was able to make a stick. So uh, applaud to him. He was able to get that second place position. And we're just going to follow along right behind them as we head into turn number four or five, I believe. But um, anyways, we are doing pretty well here for our first race. Yeah, we have started in fourth place. So that was one of the check marks I wanted to get off the way because I did not want to start in the middle of the pack or towards the back. This race is very, very heavily dependent on your fuel consumption. So uh, the reason why I picked the Aston Martin is because it's really great on tire wear. But not only that, it's a really great car on straight line speed. So uh, we should have an all right time here because a lot of these uh, uh, straights are really, really long. So we could take advantage of the horsepower of this Aston Martin. But the only thing that the Aston Martin draw, uh, is really bad at and the number one thing we had to focus on for this race is fuel consumption. So if you guys can tell on the bottom, I am short shifting the hell out of this car. So I am not pushing this car more than past that, that gear number on the bottom because I just wanted to save as much fuel as I can. I know that the Group 3 S Martin just is a fuel guzzler. And um, unfortunately, because of that, it's just really difficult to, to utilize all that horsepower. So uh, as you can see here on lap number three, we have actually lost a little bit of uh, the gap from third place. And it looks like the top three are actually starting to make their own little uh, pack up ahead. And we're starting to get a little bit of a pressure from behind, which is uh, not good for us because I didn't want to overdrive the car. If I overdrove the car, then uh, we can find ourselves into little mistakes like how we just did right there and uh, it can lead to some really really uh, bad stuff for us because if we get caught up in the middle pack there's going to be a lot of racing a lot of people trying to aggressively work their way up and that can be uh, really really bad for us as we now get overtaken by the Volkswagen so heading into turn number 10 we get overtaken by the Volkswagen which just let him go by um, I know he was a lot faster than me at this point of the race so I was thinking to myself maybe he's on the mediums if he is on the hards then uh, we could just kind of ride along with him Utilize that slip stream and uh, maybe save a little more fuel and just uh, try to see if he can kind of pull us up into the top three and uh, Not race too hard with him and just uh, try to see if we can stay with him But as we come out of the final corner here leading our way into lap number four The tires are starting to feel a little bit weird as uh, these hards were able to last up until about lap number ten So uh, once we hit lap number ten, we're gonna switch off from the hards and just go to the softs and uh, just try to push as much as we can with those socks and overfill the car so that we can actually rev out this car and utilize that horsepower. But uh, everything working out so far pretty well as we're getting a little bit of pressure from behind. You can see on the radar, uh, we have the Brazilian right behind us kind of just lurking his way into here. And uh, as we jump into lap number five, the Volkswagen has been able to kind of pull away from us, build that gap, and look at how close he's actually getting to these top three guys as uh, each and every corner he should have been picking away at that little split and uh, now 
we kind of have lost the slipstream of uh, the Volkswagen. So that's not good for us because we lost our opportunity to save as much fuel as we can. And uh, we just have to now focus on the car right behind us, the Brazilian, and hope that he doesn't go for an overtake here because he's been most likely saving a lot of fuel due to the slipstream. And so uh, we're just uh, running our lap times as best as we can and making sure we make as little of mistakes as we can. So uh, up into lap number six, um, the tires again are starting to wear out a little bit here, but not as bad as some of these other cars. I know um, Aston Martin does really, wear, uh, really well on the tire wear, and uh, we were able to kind of make up some time on the corners, but it's just, again, on, on the exit, some of these cars, just their handling is so much better than ours, especially that Lexus and the, um, the Corvette. The Corvette's just a beast on the straight, so uh, it's probably one of the fastest cars that you can use on the straight, uh, that Group 3 Corvette. So it's just that's where it's making up a lot of its time, but we do still have the Brazilian right behind us just lurking ever so slightly as the uh, Volkswagen attempts to look onto the inside of the Lexus, Kind of took a little a peek there, but the Lexus covered off um, the inside really well, and he was able to defend his position and hold off his podium on the Volkswagen as we uh, come out into this last and final sector. So this uh, this sector right here has been uh, really really interesting. As you can see, this curb right here, you kind of have to run over that curb and that second curbing on the chicane, and uh, it can be really really tense because if you're in a car that doesn't go over that really well like this Aston Martin does uh, once you hit that sausage curb if you hit that incorrectly that can just launch your car and actually make you cut the second uh, corner and give you a one second penalty so that's one thing you really had to keep aware of um, especially when the tires start falling out here as we finally get our first person to come into the pits and that is Vortex the Brazilian uh, in the Lexus so he comes into the pits he's on the hards and I'm at this point just kind of comparing where we're at with the fuel so you can see that he was at 36 percent fuel we're right now at 39 so we've been saving a lot of fuel compared to him but we're now starting to get under pressure by the Nissan right behind us of uh, the Chilean of Roar and so I'm just keeping an eye on the gap keeping an eye on the radar as I know he's going to be pushing here especially because he's most likely going to be coming into the pits probably doesn't want to come right behind us wants to probably get ahead of us and try to make as quick of an in-lap as he can. He takes a little peek on the inside. We run our normal racing line, but we're able to outbreak him heading into turn number four. And we're just uh, trying to be as calm as we can at this point of the race because we're already half, more than halfway through the race. We know we have to come into the pits here, and we know we're going to overfill the car. So if we could just stay right ahead of Roar and uh, overfill the car, maybe we can push a lot more and try to catch up to these top four guys right ahead of us as we come into the chicane right before our pit. So top three come into the pits. They're going to all on the hards. And at this point, we're just kind of looking at the fuel here. And you can see that we saved the most amount of fuel compared to these guys. And uh, to be honest, not sure if that was a good thing because you can see that they were able to kind of st uh, stretch out their gap. And even though we all came in uh, together at the same time and they, were, they had less fuel than me coming into the pits, they still had that big gap compared to us, and uh, especially because we overfueled the car. We overfueled the car by about a lap to see if we can push as much as we can. So we're going to be on the fastest compound tires. We have a lot of fuel. Maybe we can over rev this car and we can make up some really good, uh, great lap times and try to catch up to these guys. So um, not really focused on what's going on behind me or in front of me. I'm just focusing on my lines, making sure we can put in some quality times. And uh, hopefully we can catch up to these top four guys as uh, we have a, a new leader here of FN uh, Kogi, the Brazilian. And uh, he comes into the pit. I believe by the time this all cycles around, we should still be in about fifth place position. Unless one of the top four guys accidentally got into some carnage and uh, they uh, ended up spinning out or something like that. But we come out of the final corner, head down the straight. And uh, yeah, it looks like we're able to get around FN. And we are back up into fifth place as we jump into lap number 13. So on lap number 13, you've seen right here that we are now starting to uh, put in some really fast lap times. We ran our fastest lap back on lap number 12 of a 144.8. Uh, and uh, we're now just uh, pushing the car as much as we can. We are um, running blue sectors for us, but not purple sectors. You can see Trey Gamer on the left-hand side has now put in the fastest lap time of a 144 flat. And at this point, I'm just trying to get anywhere close to that so that we can uh, close that gap up to the Volkswagen. As you can see, every single lap, he's getting somewhat closer and closer 
but unfortunately the Chilean of Roar is now starting to go into here and ruin, uh, ruin the party here. As you can see, he gets a really great run down the straight, heads into turn number one. He looks onto the inside, and we kind of have nowhere to go except for right behind him as we had to relinquish the spot. Didn't want to fight with him too much as uh, if we were to fight heading into these first uh, few corners, that would have definitely led to the Volkswagen of uh, T to just pull away from us, and uh, that's not what we need happening for us here so I let Roar get ahead of us I know he's a little bit faster here in the GTR so uh, I just wanted to follow him on the slipstream I know we have a lot of fuel um, and maybe we can save a little bit but also push so we can try to catch up to that Volkswagen and uh, not battle too much with the Nissan but uh, heading to that left hander we just go a little bit wide and you can see right there how much that actually uh, separated us from the Nissan as uh, you can see the gap really increased to about 0.6 seconds but as we head into turn number 10, we were able to utilize the Aston Martin straight line speed. We caught back up to Roar. And uh, now things are starting to get a little bit interesting here. As you can see, Vortex um, in, in the lead, where our gap to him is actually starting to decrease here. As I believe the gap was about 8.5 seconds, but now it's starting to decrease to about 7.8 seconds. Not sure if we have enough time to catch up to him, but if we're catching up to him, that means that the second and third place drivers are starting to catch up to him. And maybe they can get into a little bit of a scuffle here and a little bit of a battle. And we can get lucky here and have them either wreck each other out or just uh, close the gap to them as we have now uh, fast forward here up until lap number 16. So two laps to go here in this race. We have run, a, a, I don't want to say a flawless race, but a good of a race as we can so far. And uh, just unfortunate that we lost two positions so far, but we still are starting to gain some time on these uh, front guys right here as Second and third are starting to go side by side, heading into this uh, into this hairpin, and uh, all those fighting that they are doing right there is really starting to benefit uh, the Volkswagen, the Nissan, and us as well. As you can see, that uh, the third place driver goes a little bit wide, and that kind of upsets his car a little bit, as it allows the fourth place car to catch up to him. And now we are running in a five car pack here for the second place position. So it's a battle for second. We don't have enough fuel for another two laps so it's gonna be the last lap right here and we have 1.2 laps left so we can push the car a little bit more than what we need to and hopefully we can overtake this Nissan and we can overtake everybody else uh, as we come into the first corner here on the last lap so heading down the straight here we get a really great tow as we head into turn number one and to turn number two I'm just kind of keeping an eye on the guys up ahead trying to push the car but you can see on the bottom left that our tires are destroyed right now. The front lefts and the bottom uh, and the rear lefts are doing really, really bad. And that's really screwing up our, our entrance and our exit because I can't really get to grips with uh, pushing the car. As you can see, we go a little bit wide, heading to turn number four. We just slide the car a tad bit too much, and that's still destroying the tires. But not only that, destroying our lap time as we are trying to stay with this Nissan and this pack up ahead. So heading halfway into this lap here, we're just following along, seeing if anything's gonna happen. I know the best overtaking spot's gonna be turn number 10, and I'm just trying to close the gap up as much as we can. As you can see, it's about six tenths away from the Nissan as he goes a little bit wide into the right-hander. We get a great exit here and a great entrance, but unfortunately, we're just too far back to make any type of move. And uh, again, just keeping an eye on second, third, see if anything's gonna happen here as the gap really closes up here. We're all now basically nose to tail heading into this third sector. And you can see the Corvette goes a tad bit wide and the third place driver tries to take a little peek onto the inside, but doesn't um, have enough to go onto the inside and make that overtake. But as we head into the final sector right here, it just looks like everyone's gonna be able to uh, run single file. No one was really able to go uh, get anywhere close to get the overtake done And we're gonna finish this race in P number Steve as we come out of the final corner across the start finish line And that is a P6 here for our very first FIA race here for the new season So not too shabby of a race. We should have finished at least in fourth or third or something because Aston Martin could have definitely done really well on this track, but I think a combination of just focusing too much on the fuel, focusing um, not enough on the tire wear on that final stint, uh, we just kind of screwed ourselves over, and uh, this was the result here. But not too bad, five seconds off of the leader, which uh, is probably the closest I've been on one of these lobbies. So um, just a little bit more 
work that I have to do here with the Aston Martin to get a little more familiarized with the car and uh, hopefully we can start fighting for podiums and wins as the season progresses. So that's a bit of an opener. We'll take this sixth place position. We get 245 points and uh, that actually does really well as that puts us in, I think, ninth place for Aston Martin uh, for all of the Americas. So uh, I'll take that. But yeah, let me know how you guys did here for our first FIA race here at Barcelona if you guys even participated in it because I know some cars really did not do well here but uh if you guys did let me know how you guys did leave those in the comments in the comments down below and uh, since you guys made it all the way to the end of the video i really hope you guys enjoyed it if you guys did please feel free to hit that like button and subscribe button as it really helps out the channel and the youtube algorithm and if you guys want to follow me on the twitters instagram or on discord all those links are in the description down below as well and since you guys made it to the end i really hope you guys enjoyed the video if you guys did i hope to catch you guys on the next one peace